Well, that's because he was having night terrors and still is. <laughs> So this is what it looks like when you open it up. So exciting. Hi. Can I see your mouth? Can I see you? Oh, it's your face. <gasps> Hi. There's Dada. He says good morning too. <laughs> so cute. Last night was not a good night, and I have to actually explain a couple things. So first of all, a couple of videos goes, bleh, bleh, <laughs> cannot talk today. So a couple of videos ago, I said that we are no longer giving Grayson his pacifier. It was Thursday night last week. He had a really bad night. It started like 9, 9.30, and he had screamed and screamed and screamed, and nothing would console him. Nothing was working. I was just like, I don't know what to do. How do I help him? I was almost in tears myself, or I was in tears, if I'm being honest. And you guys, this is where I feel very silly, because I audibly, I actually said out loud, but then I'm a failure. What? Like, because I gave my baby, who's one years old, his pacifier back, I'm a failure? That just makes no sense. And in my head, I had built it up. Like, I was so proud of us because, like, we had been pacifier free and pretty soon we were going to be bottle free and we were just, like, killing it, you know? The reality was he was having a really hard time napping and I think that was affecting his nighttime sleep, too. So, I gave him the pacifier and I actually felt really guilty about it because I was like, my video says no more pacifier and that's not cool. I don't want to mislead you guys and make you think that like we're doing something that we're not doing. So I actually like went on, changed the title and edited the description and gave like a full explanation of what happened. I just didn't want you guys to think like, oh, she said she's not giving him a pacifier anymore. So she's not giving him a pacifier. And then it be like I'm lying, which I'm not lying. You know, it just, I did not intend for things to go that way. But as soon as I gave him that pacifier that night, his little body finally relaxed and he just like, fell into a deep sleep and he just needed that like he seriously needed that well that next morning I felt still discouraged I had no idea what to do where to go from here I had no idea why he was waking up I just didn't know and I just wanted to do anything I was literally googling like blackout curtains or blackout blinds um is it his wake windows we need to adjust those is it his naps do we need to adjust those is he not getting enough calories during the day like i was going through the list you guys of every possible reason for why he would not be sleeping throughout the night and because i was desperate and i just i wanted answers so badly i finally just posted on my instagram account my a day in life account that I have linked below and I just said, you know, I would love any suggestions if anyone has any ideas of what we could do. And I just explained the situation. You guys, almost immediately, I had multiple friends commenting and saying, night terrors. It sounds like night terrors. And I didn't know that this was possible at his age. I thought it happened a lot older. Well, that's because I was confusing nightmares and night terrors. Nightmares happen in the second stage of sleep and happen when you're older and you can remember them and you know, they actually like affect you because you remember them when you wake up. Sometimes you wake up scared in the middle of the night. I mean, we have nightmares as adults. 
So I thought, he can't be having nightmares, can he? Well, night terrors, if you didn't know, are completely different. They happen in the first phase of sleep, which makes sense because he was waking up around nine every time he would have them. And he would scream and scream and scream and scream and roll around the bed and thrash and toss and turn and his eyes are closed and nothing is helping. I would pick him up, I would rock him, I would try to talk to him and soothe him. I would do literally everything I could and nothing would help. Like he was almost like not responding to anything I was doing. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like I am so upset and I don't know what to do. I can't help my baby. Well, that's because he was having night terrors and still is. What you're supposed to do when they have a night terror is not really interact with them. Don't talk to them. Don't pick them up. Don't do anything that will stimulate them because that'll just confuse them and make them more upset, which is why when I would pick Grayson up, he would get more upset and worked up because he doesn't know he's having it. He's asleep. His little body is asleep. Even though it seems like he's awake, he's not. So you guys, he had his physical on Saturday and I brought it up to the doctor. She said, yep night terrors that's exactly what he's having i just didn't even understand i was like how is it possible well the good news about night terrors is once they have it and the episode is done they are still asleep the second good thing about night terrors is they do not remember it it's not like when we see something scary and have a bad dream have a nightmare it's not like that for them it's just in that sleep that REM cycle of sleep that light cycle before you go into deep sleep and then it ends. And I read that they can last anywhere from like, there's different sources that say different things, but I was reading like three minutes to like 45 minutes. And all they say to do, if it's a baby or a toddler, is stand there, rub their back to comfort them lightly, and just wait till it passes. Do you know how hard that is? <laughs> like last night was our first night actually experiencing a night terror with us knowing it was a night terror. And sure enough, it was like, nine o'clock on the dot and Grayson started screaming and I recognized the scream as a night terror scream not his I'm awake come get me scream I walked into his room this poor baby was thrashing all over his crib he's rolling back and forth he's hitting his head on the bars he is putting his pacifier in and throwing it he's not consciously aware of any of this by the way like he's asleep his eyes are closed so I'm standing there and I'm rubbing his back and I'm trying to like what you're not supposed to do is touch them, but aside from rubbing their back, but like he was at an uncomfortable position in his crib that I knew would wake him up. So I like gently tried to like position him better and then he would roll and thrash. And this probably went on for like 20 minutes where he was just screaming and I wasn't able to do anything but rub his back and help him through it. And after what felt like an eternity, I just watched him fall back into a deep sleep. Like his little body went, <sighs> And his eyes, he like relaxed a little bit and he got in a comfortable position. And then I heard him breathing like he does when he's sleeping. And I thought, okay, I think he's through the night terror. And then he was at a bad position in the crib. You know, he wasn't laying lengthwise. His head was at the short side. It's hard to explain, but you know what I mean. Like the crib's like this and his head was here and feet were facing this way. And like... You know, he's supposed to be laying lengthwise and he was not. And so if he would have stretched out a little bit, he would have smacked his head on the bars and that would have really upset him, hurt, upset him and hurt him. So I was trying to avoid that. So I just gently switched him to a different position, rubbed his back for, for a second. He was out. And that was the night terror. And it, I probably was back in bed by 9.30 and he was asleep until... 3 a.m. So something else I've noticed is when he has a night terror, he wakes up so early. It's actually considered a night waking because anything before 4 a.m., according to Taking Care of Babies, is a night waking. After a night terror night, he will wake up at like 3 in the morning because he's like ready to go. I don't know if that has anything to do with the night terror or what's going on with that, but it's not fun. <laughs> so I try to let him just lay there and entertain himself a little while. And then, so it was like 3 a.m. And then like 3.30, I finally went in and got him because he was upset. I think I probably put him back to bed by 3.45 and he just went right down. He cried for a second and then was out because he was still tired. 
but yeah you can definitely tell the difference between them just waking up and wanting to get up or being upset and wanting you versus a night terror so if you are not aware night terrors can start around nine months old and your baby may have experienced one and you just thought that they had an upset tummy we thought that um you may think that their teeth are bothering them we thought that you may think that they had a bad dream they didn't it's a night terror which is different from a bad dream or a nightmare but it's tough so for all of you parents listening if your baby is experiencing a night terror the best thing to do according to our pediatrician according to several of my mom friends is just rub their back and help them through it don't try to wake them up and don't try to make it better because you can't they're asleep but just takes comfort in the fact that they will not remember it the next day that helps me a little bit when i think about him having night terrors so because he started having those night terrors which can be caused by being overtired or just growth and development we decided to give him his pacifier back for nighttime and nap time it's just not we're just not there yet he's just not there yet he's going through a lot developmentally and i don't want to take the thing that comforts him away when he's already going through this other stuff so this is me admitting it yes we said bye to the pacifier for five days and yes we gave it back to him after five days and if you have to do that you're not a failure don't think of yourself as a failure I feel so silly that I actually said that. You just have to do what's best for your baby, huh? Yeah. And that's what was best for Grayson at the time. So, yes, so that is the update on what's been going on with nighttime, night terrors. Mama. I'm waiting on a delivery from Target. So, if that arrives, hopefully, hopefully soon it'll arrive supposed to arrive between 11 and 1 45 so we'll see it's been delayed for several days but it's the rest of Grayson's Christmas presents and instead of filming a whole video dedicated to what I'm getting him for Christmas I just thought I'd include it in this vlog because I know you guys enjoy the vlogs more than the sit-down videos anyway and I enjoy the vlogs more than the sit-down videos so that's what I'll do is when he's down for a nap and hopefully this stuff has arrived I'll go into our bedroom and I will show you guys everything that we got him for Christmas. nap like an hour and a half huh you see the camera mommy got some editing done yeah let me see hi you guys I'm basically the worst vlogger ever because I told you probably months ago that I was going to show you the playpen we use for Grayson. I haven't even really showed it in any vlogs and maybe that's why I haven't talked about it too much. This thing's amazing and it's from Amazon. I'll link it below. This is especially useful because right now with our Christmas tree up and presents under the tree and Christmas decor everywhere, Grayson will get into literally everything. So if we even have to like go to the bathroom or switch a lo load of laundry over, like Grayson will get into something. So this thing is perfect. This is just what it comes in. It's very portable. I mean, it's, it's probably a little bit thicker than like a chair that you would bring to like a football game or a softball game. <laughs> like it's really not that big. So you just pull it open. This is what it looks like when it's almost completely removed from the bag. 
Now let me show you what it looks like expanded. This is what it looks like. I didn't latch it because I'm just showing you guys a good example of the size, you know, compared to the ball pit. You can see it's not too big, not too small. It's a perfect size for Grayson and all of his toys. It works so well to keep him out of things. We take it to my grandma's and my parents anytime that we go over there because Grayson can just set up in there and play and doesn't get into anything. And it's just so perfect for that. So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's not super padded, just so you know. So don't think that it's padded because if you're on tile or a wood floor, you might want to put an extra like mat or something in there. We just put either one of our gray ones or our little love everyone in there for him. Keeping in mind choking hazards, you know, just to watch them and be careful. We never let Grayson sleep in here. It's always just for play. But this is what it looks like. It's the baby seater. It really is so awesome for us and it is very portable. So like I said, we will take it wherever we need. And again, there is a latch on that side and a latch on that other side. You can see it right there and you just pull it up and it fastens and that is how it's set up. So I'm gonna fold this up and put it in the living room and put some toys in there for Grayson to play with. you guys I have been cleaning for like the past hour and a half two hours Grayson's been entertaining himself and then we ate lunch and then he just played in his high chair and had some snacks so that's been nice I am actually about to put Grayson down for his nap because it's almost two o'clock and then I'm going to get myself a little bit more put together and then show you guys the gifts that we are getting him for Christmas because the last things that were supposed to arrive today arrived while I was cleaning. So we will be able to do that. He's literally pulling my hand down. <laughs> Time to get this little boy down for a nap. Uh, nap? <gasps> he was so good while I cleaned. I just love him so much. Oh, did you guys hear that? He was like, mama, my heart. <laughs> Okay, now time to get him down and then I will show you guys what I got him for Christmas and then I'm going to end the vlog because it's been a long day and I still have to edit this because my sister's coming into town. She flies in. She's actually flying in right now for Christmas, so I'm so excited. If little ears are around right now, you may want to put headphones in or pause the video until later because I'm going to be talking about S-A-N-T-A -A, and I don't want to spoil anything for you if you are watching with your kids. So that's your warning because I'm going to start with those gifts before I get to the gifts that Kevin and I are getting him. But let's get started. So I already talked about how I wanted to go with a more Montessori education based theme this year for Grayson's gifts. Kevin and I both really, really love that type of style. I showed some of the toys he likes in a vlog a couple of videos back because those Montessori toys really do occupy him so well and those are the toys he always goes to most. The Montessori toys are definitely the toys he goes to most, the educational toys too, and I'm really excited about that. So I wanted to lean into it and get him gifts that are educational and fun. In case you want to check any of these out or purchase them for your child, I will link them all below for you. I don't know if it'll all be here in time for Christmas because again, there's 10 days until Christmas today. So when this goes up, there's eight days till Christmas, but there's a chance that your Target might have it in stock or you might be able to get it with faster shipping if you really do want any of this. And sorry that this is up so late. I was waiting on that last 
package that had the remaining stuff for him. So now that I have that, I can talk about it. For Grayson's stocking, I really wanted to go a fun but also practical route. So I went ahead and got him things that I know he'll use, I know he'll love, something he can read, something he can use, and something he can play with. So the first thing I got for his stocking, because he will need another one of these soon, is a baby banana toothbrush. He loves this. We use it every night and I knew that he'd be needing another one soon. So I feel like that's the obligatory mom gift, right? For stockings. You always got to put a toothbrush in there <laughs> or a toothbrush and toothpaste. At least my mom did. The next practical stocking stuffer is this little brush comb set by Frida Baby. It's backwards. Whoops. There you go. <laughs> and Grayson had one of these, but it was like really old and dirty and so I tossed it and he's just using one of those like really tiny baby brushes. He doesn't have much hair so that's not a big deal but I did love his Frida Baby brush so much so I did want to get another one and I thought this is the perfect opportunity to do so. So yeah if you haven't tried this for your baby definitely try it. And this next one is something that he will use slash love and he already has it and I he got it in his stocking last year, but I figured he needed a duplicate because you know how kids are with their little loveys. So I just got him another lovey, and it's the exact same lovey he has. So if anything happens to that one, we have a backup. Or if it needs to be washed, backup. <laughs> I ordered Grayson five books, two for his stocking, three for gifts. Also, sorry about the awkward filming location. Grayson's napping, and I'm trying to like squeeze everything in around me. You guys, taking a thumbnail was ridiculous and I kept dropping things, so it's a miracle Grayson's sleeping right now. <laughs> but anyway, so that's why I'm in this very awkward space by my closet door and our dresser. <laughs> but this is just where it worked at the time. I was going to decide the books that went in his stocking based on their sizes when we got them because it's hard to tell sometimes how big they are. So these are going to go in his stocking. Good night, good night construction site. And then a classic brown bear. These are two stocking stuffer books. And then lastly for his stocking, the toy. I saw a recommendation about this on Instagram and I was like, this is something Grayson would totally love. These are called pop tubes and they look like this. There's several in there. there I think there might be eight in there. And you know, they can like to stretch them. Like, oh my gosh, how satisfying, right? And you like that. And then you can like, I think they can connect them so they can like build things. I mean, their possibilities are endless with these. I just thought these would be really good because they're big enough for him to hold on to and they're bright colors so they'll fascinate him, they'll interest him and they're just really fun. So I can't wait to give him these. I haven't decided though. I think I might just put them loose in his stocking because the box isn't really that exciting so like he won't understand what this box is and he won't understand to open it so i might just put them loose in a stocking so that's all for stocking stuffers like i said tried to go practical and stuff that he can use read play with grayson's santa gift is a big one the love every play kits especially when they turn into toddlers are not too cheap but we love the love every play kits we actually cancel our subscription um for a few months because Grayson just like didn't seem to be interested in the toys that much but he's definitely back into them. <laughs> the Babbler has some of the most fun love every toys that I've seen so I knew for a fact that because it aligned perfectly with Christmas time we would definitely have to get him that and then that would be the perfect Santa gift. I haven't opened it but you guys I should probably just open it and show you what's inside because I feel like that will be helpful. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. So exciting. So first you have this puzzle, it's got the wooden knobs, and it looks like it has the different colors. Oh yeah, so he's going to be obsessed with this. There's so much in here. Okay, so we have the little bunnies. Look how cute this is. There's little bunnies inside. This is so cool. Okay, so there's that. This is one of the things that made me want to purchase this. You can change this top piece out. And like, for example, what's in here right now? Is it upside down? It's probably on the bottom, right? Normally they have magnetic bottoms. Yeah, it comes with little carrots and other toys inside. It can be a little coin bank. It can be a little carrot. Like, you can put the carrots in there. Like, seriously, Love Every is just so cute. And then it also comes with extra tops. So I've seen people can put Q-tips in here. I've heard this isn't super great though because the Q-tips get 
really messed up and it's messy but it's a good sensory activity for sure and then there's the top for the coin slot so how cute is that and then moving on over here we have another book oh good another bedtime book it's called bedtime for zoe i don't want to take everything out because you guys like that would be horrible but let me just show you look he puts the little rings on ah oh, love every take all my money love every okay oh this is the one that has the oh my gosh you guys look and then there's that little thing he can put the balls in and it rolls down I think that is attached to this actually. Oh, that's why this wasn't coming out, duh. This is all attached to each other. Are you kidding? Like, this, this stuff is seriously so stinking fun. And I'll just show you this because I'm obviously not taking it all out. It comes with all of these things. That's the little puzzle. Um, It looks like the little circle of friends puzzle. Okay, I'll go in order. So circle of friends puzzle. And then slide and seek ball, that's number two. Number three, bunnies in a felt burrow, how cute is that? Four is wooden coin bank and coins. Five is carrot lid with carrots. Six is hosting lid. Don't quite know what that is. I don't really know what that is, but posting lid? Okay, well, <laughs> six is posting lid, that's that blue lid. Seven is bedtime for Zoe book. Oh, it says recycled paper with soy ink. I love it. Eight is flexible wooden stacker. That is that one thing we saw. And then we have the play guide. How fun is this? Grayson's literally gonna have so much fun with this. I cannot wait for Christmas because I just wanna see him play with it all. So that is the Babbler play kit that Grayson's getting from Santa. Oh my gosh, going through that made me so excited to give him those gifts because he's literally going to have so much fun, especially with the one that has the balls that roll down. Now I'm gonna show you what he's getting from Christmas from us. I'll just start with the books to get those out of the way. The books are so much fun and I'm so excited to read these to him. He already has a few from this series, but I saw it and I was like, my heart. And it's I'll Always Love You. It's the cuddle bug book. So there's You're My Little Cuddle Bug, You're My Little Snuggle Bear, and now this is I'll Always Love You. And then the next book just makes me happy. And it's kindness makes us strong. I buy a lot of books about empathy and kindness because I want to teach Grayson to be kind to everyone. And so when I find books that help teach that, it makes me so happy and I have to get them because I'm all about spreading kindness. And then the last book we got him is Night Night Farm. It's so cute because the, the pages have like this little divider and you can, it pops out. How cute is that? So that's it as far as books goes. Two in his stocking, three from us. And then I will show you the last three things that we have. So I wanted to get him something that was good for motor skills and like those fine motor skills and helping develop those. And so I found these little lacing beads and I thought these are cute because they're big enough for him to hold on to. And there's this bigger shoelace type string right here that he can use to bead them. But honestly, like, I just think they're colorful, they'll be fun for him, and he might not be the right age right now, but I'm sure in the next year or so, he will get really good with this type of thing. So I just thought this would be a really good way to occupy him, and honestly, this would be something to do, like sit him in his high chair with it and have him occupied that way, because toddlers are into everything, and so finding ways to entertain them and occupy them is key. <laughs> And this will be a good way to do that. So these are just little Melissa and Doug lacing beads. This next thing we got him is something that I wanted him to have and I wanted to find a, a good one for him. And that's an alphabet puzzle. I mentioned that in one of my recent videos. So I found this and actually I was surprised when I saw numbers too. It's two puzzles. I thought it was just this one puzzle. It's, there's a glare, but let's see. I thought this was just one puzzle, but you guys, we get two puzzles in here, numbers and letters, and that's awesome. And I like that underneath, you can see on the back, it shows like the object that the word starts with. So I love that. And then there's the numbers too. And the last thing I am probably way too excited about. I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but I think it'll just be fun and it's educational. So it's like the best of both worlds. And that is this little farmer's market color sorting set. 
do you just die? Like, how cute is this? It has like all the little fruits and vegetables sorted by color. It's like fun because you get fake food and you can play with it that way, but you also have like the color aspect. You can count them. Like there's so many things you can do with these. And I'm excited because Grayson, I think is just gonna have so much fun with them. And this is by the brand Learning Resources. And that is what I have for what we are getting Grayson for Christmas. He is one year old. He will actually be 14 months in two days. I was just trying to find gifts that are fun for him, but also educational. And I think we did that. I'm pretty proud of what we found, but I am going to end the vlog here because I need to clean this stuff up. Now I'm surrounded by it and I need to edit this vlog and Kevin and I need to work out. I hope you guys are having a great Christmas season and I am sending love and hugs to anybody that this time of year is hard for. I know that it's happy for a lot of people, but there's also some sadness for some people too this time of year if there's the loss of a loved one or something like that. So my um, thoughts and prayers are with you, but I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you next time. Thank you.